Here I've got a nice problem which comes from an entrance exam to Cambridge University in the UK. This is from the step three exam and the year is 2016. So let's see the setup first and then there will be three questions associated to this setup that we will answer. So let's consider three unique points on a parabola. So we've got P which is AP squared 2AP Q, which is a Q squared, 2AQ, and finally R, which is a R squared, 2A R. And they're on this sideways facing parabola, Y squared equals 4AX, and A is bigger than zero, meaning that this is rightward facing. Furthermore, these three points are chosen that the normal lines at Q and R intersect at P. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna solve three questions associated with this setup. Our first question, or our first thing to show, is that Q squared plus PQ plus two equals zero. And likewise, we will immediately get that R squared plus PR plus two is equal to zero, just because there's some symmetry between the point Q and the point R. Okay, so let's dive into this. So first of all, we need to measure the slope of the line going between P and Q different ways. So let's see, we can do that the following two ways. So let's say we've got the slope of line PQ. So on the one hand, it's normal to the parabola at Q. So that's one distinguishing characteristic. And then another thing that we know is it goes through two given points. So we've got AP squared, 2AP, and then AQ squared, 2AQ. Okay, so using these two facts, we can calculate this slope two different ways, giving us an equation which will hopefully reduce to this quadratic. Okay, so let's work on this normal to the parabola at Q first. Okay, so in order to do that, maybe we need to find something that's tangent to the parabola and then recall that a normal line is perpendicular to a tangent line, so the slope is the negative reciprocal. So in order to find a tangent line, we need to look at the derivative dy by dx which means in order to find a normal line, we need to look at minus one over dy by dx. Obviously, this is gonna be evaluated at q. Okay, so let's maybe calculate this dy dx. Notice we can do that using implicit differentiation. So taking the derivative implicitly with respect to x of this left-hand side will give us two y dy by dx equals four times a. Okay, so that means that the slope of this normal line, which I'll maybe call m sub n, like I said, it's minus one over dy by dx, but when everything kind of ends off, this is gonna be minus y over two a. Now, evaluating this at the point q, which has x coordinate a q squared and y coordinate two a q, we only need the y coordinate we get, let's see, it'll be 2aq over 2a, then we have a minus sign there. So in other words, we just have minus q. So that's gonna be the slope of that normal line. So maybe I should say the normal line at point q. And then likewise, the normal line at point r would be minus r, just because there's a lot of symmetry built in to these two points. Now we can use the standard change of x over change of y in order to calculate the slope a different way. So here I'll just put m, p, q. So I'll take the difference of the y components so that'll be 2a times p minus q. Notice that I can factor that 2a out. And then taking the difference of the x coordinates, I'll have a times p minus q times p plus q. There I used a difference of squares factoring after factoring that a out. Okay, but now let's notice that this a will cancel with this a and then this p minus q will cancel with this p minus q, leaving us with two over p plus q. 
So next up, what we'll do is equate these two objects, again, because they have to be the same number, given that they're the same, they represent slopes of the same line. So we have two over P plus Q is equal to negative Q. So I think maybe our best bet is to move this minus sign from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And then we can cross multiply, leaving us with q squared plus pq is equal to negative 2. But let's notice that that is exactly equivalent to this guy up here. Then we could play this same game instead of with the slope of pq with the slope of pr, and we would have gotten that quadratic equation over there. Let's maybe notice that this actually gives us something quite a bit stronger and that is the numbers Q and R are roots of the polynomial X squared plus P times X plus two equals zero because they both satisfy that quadratic equation. And that's actually something that we'll keep in mind for one of the further steps. Okay, so now let's move on to the second part of this problem. So we just got done showing that P, Q, and R satisfied these two polynomial type equations. That was our first part. Now we're gonna move on to the second part, which is to show that the line Q, R passes through a point that is independent of the choice of P. Okay, so that means we would probably be well suited to find the equation of line QR, which means we need the slope of line QR, which I'll call MQR. Again, we'll just use change of X over change of Y again here. So let's see, we'll have in the numerator 2A Q minus R after factoring some things out, much like we did on the last board. And then in the denominator, we will have a q minus r times q plus r. Again, after simplification like we did on the last board. Okay, so now let's notice that a bunch of stuff cancels here. This a cancels with this a, and then this q minus r cancels with this q minus r, leaving us with two over q plus r. And now we can use point slope form in order to write down the equation of this line. So we have y minus the y portion of the point. Maybe we'll use this point right here. So 2aq equals slope 2 over q plus r times x minus the x portion of this point, aq squared. Okay, so now let's see if we can simplify this. The one thing that bothers me is maybe this q plus r in the denominator there. But we can actually simplify that quite a bit using what we had on the last board. So let's take the difference of these two equations that we constructed before and see what we get. So we'll have q squared minus r squared plus p times q minus r equals zero. Okay, but now we can divide this entire thing by q minus r given the factorization of this. And that'll leave us with q plus r equals minus p after a few fairly elementary steps. So that means we can replace this q plus r with minus p. Let's see what that leaves us with. So now we'll have y minus 2aq is equal to minus 2 over p times x minus aq squared. So let's multiply this p over and this 2 through to see if we can start simplifying. So if we do that, we'll have p times y minus 2a times q equals minus 2x plus 2aq squared. Okay. But now let's move this guy over and let's see what that gives us. What I mean is move this over to the other side of the equation and that's going to leave us with P times Y equals minus 2X plus 2A and then we'll have Q squared plus PQ. I realized I forgot a P there. Oh, but we know because of the equation that's satisfied by Q and P, this is exactly equal to negative two. Now we can use that to rewrite this and we'll see that we have P times Y 
is equal to minus 2 times x plus 2a. So I factored a minus sign, which changes some signs there, and then a 2 as well, which means that these two 2s don't double up. But now we see that there's an obvious point that this line goes through, and it is the x-intercept. So notice this contains the point minus 2a comma 0, and that point doesn't depend on any value of p, any value of this point right here. It only depends on this number a, which is defining the parabola. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so now let's look at the final part of this problem. Now we're ready to look at the last part of this problem. Before we do that, let's recall something that we had on the very, very first part, which will be important to this part. And that is that, first of all, Q is not equal to R. We know that because of the uniqueness of these points. And then they both satisfy this following quadratic equation, X squared plus PX plus two equals zero. Okay, our final goal is to consider T as the point of intersection of OP, where O is the origin, and QR. And then we want to show that the distance from T to the x-axis is less than A over the square root of 2. Okay, so let's see maybe how we can do that. So maybe we'll get equations for OP and QR. So let's maybe have an equation for QR first, which we actually had on the last board. So I'll just bring that up from the last board. We had this was Y equals minus two over P times X plus two A. I've already, I've just rewritten it a little bit, but that's okay. Now our equation for OP which since it goes through the origin, there's actually no real reason to go through a lot of work to get it. We know it's of the form y equals something times x, where this something is the slope of the line from zero to p. So that means it's just the quotient of this y part with this x part. But notice if we take the quotient of this y part with this x part, we just get two over p. So we, here we have this is 2 over p. Now that sets up an equation that we should be able to solve pretty easily. And that equation is just this guy equals this guy. Okay, so let's see what we have. We'll have minus 2 over px minus 4a over p is equal to 2 over px. But now let's maybe multiply this entire thing by p just to kill the denominator and then move all of this to one side of the equation. And that very quickly leaves us with the equation 4x equals 4a, which means x equals a. Now, since we wanna know the distance to the x-axis, we really need to know the y-coordinate as well. In fact, all we need is the y-coordinate. So that tells us our point t is equal to, so we've got negative a here. Sorry, this should have been a minus sign because we have a minus sign attached to this. And then plugging that in up here, we'll have minus 2a over p. But now the distance from this point to the x-axis will just be the size of this y-coordinate. Given that a is bigger than 0, that just means we get rid of the minus sign. So let's see, we've got distance of t to x-axis is equal to 2a over the absolute value of p because a priori we don't know if p is positive or negative. Okay, so that's looking good. But now, how do we bound this above by the number that we're supposed to bound it above by? Well, let's notice that Q and R are different, and they're both roots of this polynomial. But the fact that they're both real roots of this polynomial means that there are two roots, which means the discriminant of this polynomial is positive. Okay, so let's notice that the discriminant of that polynomial, that's like the b squared minus 4ac thing. So in that case, that is p squared minus 8. That is positive. Again, that's the discriminant of this polynomial. Okay, but then that means that p squared is bigger than 8. But then taking the square root of both sides, we get the absolute value of p is bigger than 2 times the square root of 2. 
But now, if we plug this inequality up here, keeping in mind that we're taking the reciprocal, we get that this is less than 2a over 2 times the square root of 2, which is equal to a over the square root of 2, which finishes this problem. And that's a good place to stop.